I speak to you for the first time as Prime Minister. We're facing certain defeat on land, the annihilation of our army, and imminent invasion. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall never surrender. It is a glorious part, um, a dream of a, of a role, um, but I, it wasn't an immediate yes. I just wondered how I would meet the physical uh, challenge of it. And in, in, in a way, I've known um, many years ago, I did a head cast with Kazuhiro Suji, who was the... Who was the makeup artist who designed Darkest Hour. Um, and I had, uh, had a head cast taken uh, for a film I, I actually en I ended up not being in, um, but had knew his work uh, when he worked under Rick Baker. Um, so I had that name in my Rolodex, as it were, and I said to Joe, Listen, if we're going to go down this, this, this road, there really is only one person, I think, that I could think of in, on, on the planet that could even remotely have a chance of pulling this off. Um, and the stars aligned. Uh, I seduced him out of retirement and got him on board, and I think... And I, 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 I happen to think it's um, uh, an incredible makeup and a, bench, a new a benchmark in the field of makeup. You've wanted this your entire adult life. No, since the nursery. But do the public want it's me? It's your own party to whom you'll have to prove yourself. No, I'm getting the job only because the ship is sinking. It's not a gift, it's revenge. Let them see your true qualities, your courage. My poor judgment. Your, your lack of vanity. Yeah, my iron will. Your sense of humour. Ho, ho, ho. <sighs> now go. Go? Be... Be what? Be yourself. Well, you have to slay all the dragons of all the, the, the people, wonderful actors who have played Churchill over the years. You're not only stepping into the shoes of Winston, but Albert Finney, Robert Hardy, Brian Cox, uh, Gleeson, uh, uh, Lesko, you know, the list goes on and on. Um, and then, and, and then really above and beyond that, you're playing someone who is so iconic and has been so mythologised as a character, um, at, at rightly so, um, that you wonder if um, you can find the, the man. I went to the uh, newsreel footage of this particular m moment, uh, defining moment in history, and the revelation to me really was um, the energy and the dynamism of the of the character of the man. Um, you could see this giant brain whirling at five hundred miles an hour, and he and he had a sort of rather athletic tread, and he was marching ahead of everyone. He had a sense of theatre. I think he was a great self promoter. Um, he, he seemed to understand brand, branding before it was a thing. You know, the silhouettes, very famous, the man, the strange sort of odd Victorian clothes with the cane, the Homburg hat, the cigar. You know, he knew the image. He knew, what, he knew how powerful the, 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 the image was. I believe we are to meet regularly. Once a week, I'm afraid. How is... How are you for Mondays? Uh, I shall endeavour to be available on Mondays. Four o'clock? I nap at four. Is that permissible? No, but necessary. I work late. <laughs> then perhaps lunchtime. Lunch? Mondays? Your Majesty. Prime Minister. For Joe, and he said this, those sort of uh, giants of history um, are not really very useful to, to him. He wanted to sort of get to know the man. His goal, I think, 
was to take Churchill from the pedestal and meet him, warts and all, sort of eye, eye to eye. Even though we know the outcome, um, he wanted it... Certainly the second half of the film plays like a sort of political thriller. Chamberlain is out, Churchill is in. I mean, you meet the king, he says, will you take the job? And there you are, now you're prime minister and you inherit the mess. And you've got your entire army um, uh, cornered at Dunkirk um, with no hope at that time of bringing them back. So you've got 300,000 men against 5 million that Hitler had. You've still got to k k take care of domestic policy because that's just not going to go away just because there's a war about to happen. You have an imminent threat of, of Hitler and Nazi Germany invading England and you are fighting um, the resistance in your own cabinet to the war. So obviously you use your imagination as an actor and you place yourself in, in, in situations and scenarios and other people's lives. Um, but I really, it's a, it's a stretch to imagine what uh, that, the pressure and the, and the tension that he carried. And before our forces are wiped out completely, now is the time to negotiate in order to obtain the best conditions possible. Hitler will not insist on outrageous terms. He will know his own weaknesses. He will be reasonable. When will the lesson be learned? When will the lesson be learned? How many more dictators must be uh, wooed, appeased, good God, given him mixed privileges, before we learn? You cannot reason with a tiger when your head is in its mouth. We were privileged to have a, uh, behind the Velvet Ropes tours of uh, Downing Street, we, uh, which was bigger than I imagined and a little more shabbier than I thought it would be. Um, we went to Blenheim Paris, where Churchill was born, uh, Chartwell, and uh, the war rooms. Um, I got to sit in the uh, war cabinet in the chair that Churchill occupied during the war. Um, and that was... Uh, to go, I mean, literally to touch history um, on the arm of the, on the left arm of the chair, there are these deep scratches and divots that he had made with his fingernails. And on the right hand side, um, on the arm, the edge of the arm, are scratches from his ring. And that is behavior. Um, that is uh, stress, anxiety, uh, or, you know, that is now as part of this piece of furniture. And it was very useful as an actor to, get, to, to um, take the temperature of what it must have been like. I give you your father, my beloved husband, the Prime Minister. <laughs> the Prime Minister. The thing that has really um, it, what I, I'm most happy about is the reaction of the family. They've really embraced this interpretation and um, um, uh, jokingly, uh, Randolph, the great-great-grandson, he, he jokingly calls me great-grandpapa. That's very, very sweet of him. Um, we had 26 churches um, at, the, at the premiere. 17 of them actually came to the set for a visit. Um, and uh, they've responded very much to um, to that to the humor and the and the, and, 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 and the energy hmm. <laughs>